How's it going, YouTube? It's been a while. Um, <clears throat> I've gotten a lot of questions lately um, about basically how to care for a uh, for a boa. Uh, mainly, you know, with the breeding and uh, selling babies, being at the reptile show and selling them, talking to a lot of people. Um, you know, just people interested in getting into the hobby or that are just getting into the hobby. Um, you know, basically w what to do to make sure that uh, you're doing it right. Um, I'm not sure if I've made a video like this before, but, you know, if I did, it was a while ago. So, uh, you know, just thought I would make one now. Somebody asked me if I could, so, I was like, you know, why not? There's a bunch of these out there, but, um, whatever, I'll make my own. So uh, I'm going to use uh, Lily here as my example. Uh, this is my 2011 lipstick line, Junglo, or Jungle Sunglo, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> first of all, when you bring home a new snake, quarantine. Um, if it's your first one, yeah, I guess put it in its closure. Use paper towels um, for the for probably the first month or maybe even a week, just to make sure it doesn't have mites, it doesn't have a respiratory infection, um, you know, whatever. Um, if it's not your first boa, I would keep it outside of the snake room anywhere from one month to six months. Um, again, paper towels, make sure it doesn't have mites, any other kind of illness, and um, IBD is a, a big thing. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's a pretty serious disease that boas can get, um, and it's terminal. God, I hope you can hear that cat. I hate that cat so much. Oh, man. Every morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, he's meowing just like that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you do not want any of your boas to get IBD because that can lead to an entire collection having to get put down. Um, as for caging, um, you can get a cage this big, which will have the snake comfortably for the rest of its life. Or, uh, you know, if you're like me, you don't have money right away for this cage. Um, I usually start my snakes off in 32 quart Sterilite tubs. Um, those are still pretty big, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> They're fine in it. Um, you know, I just get that tub, newspaper, water bowl, um, get a heat pad to go underneath it, and, um, you know, just keep them in there until the size is obvious, you know, obviously when they need to upgrade, get them a cage this big instead of, um, you know, getting another bin that you're going to have to replace. Um, you don't need a cage like this. A lot of people keep their snakes in tubs like that. Um, I prefer cages like this. You don't have to get this brand. This is a boa file. Um, you have animal plastics. You have vision cages. There's a ton of brands out there that you can get. Um, some people like to use glass enclosure enclosures. I don't. Um, they're harder to keep humidity in. Uh, you know, just sucks. Screen top cages, really, is what I should say. Aquariums. Um, they suck. Um, <clears throat> as for the heating situation, um, as you can see, I have radiant heat panel, heat panels in my cages. <clears throat> um, you want your hot spot, you know, right underneath the heat to be 92 degrees. Uh, it's breeding season right now, so I have it turned down and I've had this cage open for a little while. But, uh, right now, that hot spot, because I had the cage open, and the, uh, I had Bella's cage open for a while, too, so the probe is actually in there, and, um, you know, the hot spot, these things have the, the capability to get very hot. Um, that hot spot just now is 105, it's down from, like, 110, um, so, you know, you really want a thermostat when you're using 
you know, with heating your enclosures. Um, you know, middle cage should be around mid 80s. Cold side of the cage where the water goes should be around, uh, you know, anywhere from the low 80s to high 70s. Um, <clears throat> and just, you know, play it by ear. Those are your av you know your average typical temperatures but some you know everybody's different you might have a snake you know if it's your first snake if it's always hanging out over here and never moving your enclosure might be too hot vice versa if it's hanging out on the hot spot it might be too cold so uh, you know read your read your snake's body language really um, humidity you you're gonna want humidity anywhere from 50 to 80 percent um, when they're in shed, you want to go towards that high end to 80, so they have a perfect shed and you don't have anything stuck. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, super low humidity will cause them to get respiratory infections and, you know, just cause problems for your life, basically. Um, other than that, cleaning is probably the most annoying part of having a boa. Um, small bowls like this don't make that much of a mess. Um, you get a tipped water bowl every now and then, but uh, other than that, they don't poop that big or whatever. Um, <coughs> now, when you have a bow that's you know as big as this girl right here, can't really see her, but I know most of you should know Bella. Um, she can really wreak havoc <laughs> when she uh, when she goes. So. <clears throat> um, be ready to clean. Um, I spot clean. Uh, you know, whenever there's, you know, she poops over there, I'll rip out that newspaper, put a fresh one down. Um, same thing, once the newspaper starts to get old, if she hasn't dirtied it for a while, I'll just replace it anyway. Um, again, I change the, I change the water every, every day to every other day. Um, you know, scrub the bowl down if it's been a while. So, uh, a lot of times you can get um, a nice little biofilm in there of bacteria. Just wash it out with some soap. Um, make sure you make sure you rinse it thoroughly. Um, once a month, I like to do a little mite prevention. Uh, last year, I had a pretty huge outbreak of mites. Um, my second one in the shit. I don't even know. Um, the 15 years that I've had snakes, um, it sucks. You don't want them. They're the worst things. One of the worst things that can happen in your life when you have reptiles. Um, not even joking either. <clears throat> They're literally indestructible, <laughs> impossible to kill, um, and they're very stubborn. You know, you get rid of them. You think you get rid of them. You don't see anything for a long time, and then. You know, you'll be washing a water bowl and you'll see a tiny little speck of pepper crawling across the water bowl. Uh, it's the worst feeling. So, uh, you know, I said enough is enough. <laughs> I, have, uh, I always have a ton of cans, a bunch of cans of Prevenamite around. Um, again, for preventing mites. Uh, I use it once a month when I'm cleaning cages. It just you just spray it right on the newspaper. It's highly toxic, so it needs to air out before your snake can go back on it. Um, <clears throat> but it keeps mites away and it kills mites, but it does not kill my eggs. So if you have mites, um, you know it's not like a one-time thing. They're all going to be gone uh, once the eggs hatch. You know if they uh, if they hatch once the chemicals are kind of died down um, they'll survive and keep going I also have I also spray the pieces in with this it's a uh, mix solution it's it's a gallon of water with four ounces of Nick's life shampoo um, that does kill eggs so if you can just wet if you have mites already if you can just wet every part of that of the cage down and use it for a month, uh, once a week every month, you should get rid of them. Um, that does kill eggs, again, like I said, so <clears throat> just in case I give the cage a 
good even spray. It does leave a residue. That's not terrible for the snakes at low concentrations, and um, it does keep mites away. So I do that monthly just to make sure the mites never come back. Um, and then you should do this every month, but every three months for me because of my hectic schedule, I uh, you know disinfect all the cages. I'll uh, I'll put the snake in uh, the bathtub or a bin of water. <clears throat> and uh, you know, just let them soak, swim, get some exercise, whatever they want to do. And I will uh, wash the cage with a bleach solution. Um, I'm thinking of getting—I can never remember the name. It's, I think it's Hex or something. I don't know. Um, you can find it on any reptile specialty website. It's—it's it's a non-toxic disinfectant that a lot of people recommend for use of, with reptiles. Um, you know, I'll get that one day, but for now, uh, diluted bleach solution is fine. Um, so that's every three months. <clears throat> and then, you know, everyone's favorite part, feeding. Um, again, all this advice has been for a pet boa. Um, if you're planning on breeding, it's basically the same, just a little different. Especially when it comes to feeding is the main part. Um, but, you know, once a, one meal a week... Um, a meal big enough to leave, not a huge lump, but a noticeable lump in the snake is good. Um, and, you know, by the time your snake's an adult, it should be fine on a jumbo rats, one jumbo rat a week. Um, for breeding purposes, you might want to step it up for a female. Um, you know, rabbits, two rats, you know, whatever you want. If, uh, you know, if you want a smaller snake, you can do, um, a rat every two weeks, or a smaller rat once a week. Um, your snake will be a little more, well, a lot more active, possibly more aggressive because it's hungry. Um, but, you know, some people don't want a giant snake, but they still want a boa, so. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Um. I hope that helped. Those of you who are trying to get into the hobby or, you know, just are starting out and you wanted a little more, uh, you want to learn a little more. Um, <clears throat> I would recommend, you know, if you want to, <laughs> um, this, oh, when I got this thing, this was my Bible. I've showed it before. Um, the Complete Bow Constrictor by. Vincent Russo. Um, he does have a breeding, he breeds, uh, what's his name? Cutting Edge Herps, I believe, is uh, his brand name. He uh, specializes in localities. He's not super into morphs and stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm all for localities. I love Surinams and uh, true red tails like that. I think they're the most beautiful things, so. Um, he has some good stuff, and the book is great whether it be uh you know you're trying to learn more about snakes you're trying to keep them as pets or you're trying to breed um like the name of the book says it's a complete guide so um pretty wise guy uh i've basically followed his advice from that book and uh done pretty good so far so um again let me guys let me know if you have any questions comment, message me, message me on Facebook, uh, whatever you guys want, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed.